We're gonna take a walk down memory lane and talk about some cool retro or limited edition Jeeps that I would personally love to own. So guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start old to new. I figure we kinda would have to do this in a way that made sense for us chronologically and talk about some of the units that I would love to own over the years. The first one for me, right away, the Ford GPW. I mean, this is the original US military vehicle. We go to the Bantam Jeep Heritage Festival. The Willis Overland Ford and Bantam Car Company, or I believe that's the name of it, actually were the ones that joined it together and created what we have as the quarter ton vehicle to help pull the US through World War II and ended up with a victory. So for me, from 1941 to 45, the Ford GPW is probably my favorite and it's just because it has so many unique touches to it. But that is something that I would absolutely love to own and just keep it bone stock just like this. Maybe put a turret in the back or something. But the Ford GPW, the nine slot front grille, the small five inch headlights, cat's eyes in the front. This to me is Americana. It's more of a piece of history but it's also Jeep history for me too. So I would love, love, love to own one of these, especially in great condition like this. This one's kind of neat for me. Now I skipped obviously a few generations, the CJ2s, the CJ3s, but we went up to a 1967 Jeep CJ6. So not a CJ5, a CJ6, which actually extended the wheelbase and extended the cab of the CJ5. And what I thought was really neat about these and what makes them so rare is these were very heavily used as utility vehicles. So a lot of these actually could be optioned with the equipment of a PTO, which is a power takeoff unit on the back and the front sometimes of the vehicle. I've even seen these before with crane and kind of digging attachments on the back. I've seen them used in farming. I've seen all sorts of things, including a PTO winch up front. And what was neat is that was a power takeoff which used hydraulic or a drive shaft power to spin other attachments. The reason these are so rare is because they were either used for things like that, they were used in the military, but back then in the 60s, you didn't buy an extended length Jeep to do anything but go out hunting, go out camping, go out farming. You beat the snot out of these things. So to see one like this is extremely rare, but just look at the length of the cab here. Drop down tailgate in the back. This is a prime example of one I would love to have. The side mounted spare tire. This is actually a beautiful addition here of one. So it did sell already probably a long time ago, but this would be one I would love to have in the stable. And I would keep this, these older ones, I would keep very, very, very close to stock. Next one up on the map. 1978 CJ7 Golden Eagle in the brown color. So my dad actually had a CJ7 exactly like this. It was brown in color. It had the Golden Eagle decal. It had the V8 under the hood. This was a fun vehicle for me. Always the top and doors were off. Windshield was folded down and we used to ride to football practice. And I remember we ran out of fuel one time in this. He, my dad said, here's a good warm up for football. You're gonna help push this to the gas station. It's a V8 and a Wrangler too. And the Golden Eagle across the hood, it just screams Americana. Now we're gonna move into the YJ era, which is we've got a few on here of the YJs because they're arguably my favorite generation. That was my first Jeep. First one, 1988 Jeep Wrangler Sahara. This one is a rare, rare, rare bird. They did not make many of these Saharas and this color combo was really what started off that entire Sahara generation. Came with special edition wheels, fog lights. This had the sport cage instead of the family cage. So the nice slant back on there. I've owned an 89 Wrangler that has the same cage. While it's like not safe at all for your back passengers, it looks so much cooler than the sport cage on here. This one was sold on Bring a Trailer for $24,000 in July of 2023. So just a few months back. And it is just a beautiful, it was a frame off restoration that they returned back to stock plus a little bit of a lift to replace those components. If I had a YJ Sahara like this, any of these YJs, I would do factory plus. So I would kind of keep that same style body but I would do upgrade of wheels and tires, new lift kit, maybe new axles and LS under the hood, modernize it, but keep the nostalgia on the exterior. Now they did come with a 4.2 liter, which is a great engine. 4.0 is arguably a lot better, but just a beautiful looking Jeep here. And uh, kind of what piqued my interest was the YJs when I first started into it, because that was my first Jeep. This one, one year newer, the 1989 YJ Islander, made in four colors, yellow, red, blue, and white with the iconic Islander graphics, Islander seats, color matched fenders, sport cage. Ugh, I would love to find a yellow one. The yellow ones for me seem to be extremely hard to find. I found a few of them, but they look completely rotted to hell. I'm not sure what's going on with them or how they were used, but this one here from Ruby Trucks down in the Carolinas, oh my God. 
I would just love to have one of these. I could just, for me though, I would picture this, lift it up, maybe do the fender chops on there, but keep it all that original yellow. I have old vintage Marlboro bags in the back and a, and a vintage igloo cooler in this. This is just screams the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, and this brings back so many memories for me. So let's move on, we got one more YJ. Here's another cool one, a 1994 Jeep Wrangler Splash Edition. These were once again, kind of tricky to find, especially hard to find in good condition. This one here is in the blue color. They, It's actually a Navajo blue. They made them in white, and then there was actually a red one that came with a different color splash graphic. The white and the blue just look fantastic on here. And look at that side graphic. I mean, the teals, the retro, this reminds me of those old retro cups that you used to get. And uh, I, I get it, it's just some decals on the side, but maybe we might be able to incorporate something like that into Ryan's Jeep just because that is such a cool it's the 90s you, can, you can't get any more 90s than that this one has been lifted and, and done up a little bit it's sold unfortunately and it only sold for 10 grand which like to me that's a good deal because now this is 15 to 18 easily to something else I actually noticed on another forum on the Wrangler forums do you guys remember these at all do you remember the Jeep advertisements in the YJ days part of me feels like they were a lot more fun in the 80s and 90s because there's like some spray paint splash decal on this side. I, it looks like a mint kind of teal duster cover, tonneau cover, white roll cage cover, which I know this was at least 92 and past because this is the sport cage on here. Look at the mint tire cover and then it gives you two options for like a bright orange and a pink. Now I've seen the pink ones new in box and they go for a lot of cash, but why doesn't Jeep make them more fun like this? I think this retro style, if you offer that in a Jeep catalog, people be 100% in. But there was two pages to this ad. Down below you can actually see the white soft tops that they used to offer too. Retro ski rack on the back too. Um, but yeah, here another one. And down below we actually noticed this one looks to have the red duster cover and a red, yellow, and blue. This to me is like ultimate 90s. Everything was these bright, vibrant colors. And then this one has, it looks like yellow and blue, red Jeep with yellow top and yellow covers. But yeah, okay, let's move on to TJ's. One of my favorite TJ's, favorite colors all time, the Inca Gold in the 03 Rubicon. Very disappointed in you, Jeep, for not coming back out with this with the 20th anniversary, especially that I've driven by our local dealership and there's a Dodge Hornet sitting there in Inca Gold. So what the heck, like put it on the Jeep. The 03 Rubicon, I love this color. Um, I mean, the TJ days, I had owned a bunch of TJs, but the Inca Gold was always such a cool color to me. And I just really thought it's a bright, it's a neat color, but it's also like, you don't see too many gold vehicles like this. So really cool in 03. A good example here was on cars and bids. I don't know if it ever sold. Sold for 13 grand in 2021. That's not terrible. Another one, let's go on to another TJ. We'd use a lot of the different forms here and sorry for the ads that are gonna pop up. <laughs> I don't even know that what that it's like cooking and spicing ads I don't know uh, but the LJ Rubicon Sahara edition what a cool addition there it was like let's just mix the LJ the Rubicon the Sahara all together and make one really cool addition the interior this guy just took a couple photos but what I found really interesting was this he posted up the original window sticker and this is called I knew they were called the unlimited but it's the 2005 Wrangler unlimited trail which I'd never seen that trail on the end. I, I'd never heard of that, but you can read it. It says the Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon. So it comes with all the features and specs on here. And then optional Sahara Equipment Group. So it came with everything built in. And back in 2005, that was 30 grand. That's an expensive Jeep back in 2005. So this is like a current day, probably $60,000 Jeep. Uh, but let's move on to the, let's go to the JK days, which Ryan, <laughs> I, I don't know if you never knew this existed, but this was such a cool factory ordered option that you could get from Mopar, this is the JK8. So you could actually convert a four-door unlimited to a JK pickup. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about this, but looking back on it and seeing what the price was, it was only $5,400 without installation. You would of course do all the body work and the paint, but I think you could probably reasonably have this done for about 10 grand back then. So to make your Jeep into a pickup for 10 grand, this article was actually posted July 14th of 2011. So yeah, you can see that the base sport trim starting at 26,000 back then, you could do a JK pickup for like 36 grand. That to me is a good deal. That's that's pretty cool. And to be able to buy one new, yeah, it comes with new body panels, make up the pickup bed, new bulkhead, roll bar extensions, removable fiberglass roof. There's a lot of cool photos of them. And yeah, there's the one that Jeep actually did there. So that's uh, definitely really, really cool. And something I think 
that would be neat to be able to find one of these like new old stock like someone that had one and never installed it buy an old jk for like 10 grand yeah. and do that yeah. that would be really cool we could do the bodywork repaint it because it probably needs painted that would be a neat one how many of you guys saw the jk let us know in the comments i thought it was super cool next one we're back on car and driver again here we go really cool one this one resonated with me just because this was around the time high school college years this was the 10th anniversary Rubicon. Very, very special edition to me just because it was the addition of so many cool things onto these Jeeps. We had saw a little bit of a vented hood before then. It was the Power Dome from like AEV. They made it and put on a couple of the, the Call of Duty editions. But this was the Rubicon, the true Jeep Rubicon vented hood. And that's where it all started. Rubicon 10th anniversary, red leather seats, original anvil color you could get this in a couple different colors the enhanced rock rails km2 wheels optional front winch steel front and rear bumpers optional tire carrier on there this was the this was the jeep to have back then and even now these just look so cool when i see them rolling around we actually passed weren't we talking about we just ordered your anvil and we're headed up to detroit and we passed yeah the 10th anniversary rolling by in the anvil color beautiful color the red in the anvil just works but yeah beautiful jk and uh we got another jk i want to show you too that you might not have known existed but i did and i would have loved to have one the jeep red rock edition so here you guys have it the jeep red rock edition here the big thing with this is that they only made 50 of these so the red rock edition was to commemorate the 50th anniversary of easter jeep safari and what a beautiful trim two inch factory lift 35s and very similar to what the extreme recon wheels are enhanced rock rails color matched fenders tire carry a jeep branded cb radio steel front bumpers the list goes on and on. I think this was actually a big test for what Jeep could do with an Extreme Recon style. They sold only sold 50 of them, 50 of them, but you can see the Fox shocks that came with the Mopar lift, Jeep branded differential covers, the Mopar relocation for the third brake light here. It's just, I know they were already thinking of the JL when they built this because they were probably already starting to model it, but custom cat skin interior, what a cool, what a cool, cool trim to see here. I absolutely love this. You don't see these go for sale too often. And they actually, these were the Jeep branded LED headlights before Jeep came out with their own. They were like JW speaker Jeep branded ones. But yeah, let's move on to a JL then. So here's a JL that was a, a rare bird. This was only available for a few months on the factory ordering side. And that is the Chief Blue JL. So for the 2020, it was a 2021 model year that you could actually order these. It was only available for, from what a few people said, months maybe that was during covid too which was hard to get vehicles so you had to order them dealers could not get them in stock i don't believe you could barely find them in stock but this guy on the forums actually brings up i cannot make up my mind on either chief blue or nacho nacho was also such a cool color remember that on the gladiator mojave nacho was really cool but chief to me that's such a neat color this screams islander decals or something retro on it let's move on to another one here one of my faves <sighs> Why didn't I buy one of these? I remember building this out over and over and over. The Extreme Recon Purple Rain 392. Now this is a 2023, you could get them in 2022. The 22 is my favorite because you had different bolt pattern here on the wheels. So you got the actual, the 22 bolt instead of these 10 bolts. But yeah, the Purple Rain 392 just, and that one, I love it too, because it's not the Sky One Touch and I love that top. We got one more, one more JL that we want to check out. Did you guys even know they made these? Did you? I know Scott does, my good friend Scott. He has one of two in existence, two in existence total. There were only two Gecko 392s made. What a rare, now you wanna talk about rare. I remember though that morning I could build one of these out. I was remember I built it out and I was like, ooh, that would be neat to order. I didn't realize it, like it was gonna be open for like 12 hours. It might not have let the order go through, but somebody else did. So I know Scott's got the only extreme recon Gecko 392, which is like, this one here is just a regular one, but rumor has it, this one actually, I think sold on eBay for close to $120,000. And this is a 2021 model year, which meant this was only 75, 76 MSRP, one of two ever built. On today's viewer rig of the video, we are checking out Jay's 2021 Gecko Gladiator Rubicon. He's running a set of 37 by 13 and a half tires with a two and a half inch AEV spacer lift. Now, since this is the Rubicon trim, you definitely get a lot of added bonus from the start. And it looks like he does have a set of the 
Baja Designs lights. Factory bumpers yet, but did the fender shop and has a lot more plans to go with it. Beautiful looking gecko Jeep and some great content behind it. He said, love your content too, and it's very inspiring. We appreciate you so much for reaching out. If you guys want to have a chance at your Jeep being featured, be sure to hit us up through Instagram or send us an email. What I want to hear about down below is do you have a favorite trim model? Do you have a favorite year or favorite edition that maybe I never knew of? I know it was until a few years ago, I actually found out about a YJ Olympic edition. There was actually an Olympic, like for the Olympics made of a YJ. This is a deep ask from Ryan and I. If you guys have any retro photos of a YJ, a CJ, kind of that era, 70s, 80s, 90s, with either factory decals on it, like factory splash decals, factory whatever decals, or some of your own retro decals. If you guys have pictures of those, we'll drop an email to just info at dirtroadcredmedia.com. Send me some photos because we would love to get some ideas. Heck, maybe we'll even put your photos up on the new wall when we have them. Till next time though, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred, and I want you to get out there and earn yours.